Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make an arcade controller using an old DDR dance mat that you can use on your consoles. I got a couple DDR dance mats, a Konami one and a Universal one from a large Craigslist lot that I bought. And the guy threw in the dance mats for free and I was like, oh that's cool. Later did I realize that the dance mats their dog actually like peed on, so that's why you don't see them in the picture. If you open these up, you can see a PCB which has clear solder test pads that you can solder to. And even what's better is if you flip this over, the Konami ones tell you what the buttons are. So the directions up, down, left, right, and the buttons down and right, which are X and circle respectively. Now, if we use the Konami one, that only gives us four face buttons to use as a controller. So we'll start, select, X and circle. But I found out this Pelican third-party brand though a lot more going on, has two extra buttons, which is triangle and square for the PlayStation version. And in theory, you could use this on the GameCube or Xbox, but for my testing, the GameCube, though I owned it out for the PlayStation, the GameCube didn't want to recognize it at all. And I might have, I have a feeling that's because the GameCube is looking for that controller controller only when it's got a DDR game running, but that's just a theory. So we're gonna ohm out what connections are what. I know that that big fat ground, or that big fat square pad is ground, and I'm just looking for that ground where it is on the board, and it's that very top pin. In order to figure out what connections are what, I'm gonna solder a wire onto that top pin, which is gonna be ground. And then I'm going to connect it to a PS1 and using Tekken 3, which is kind of my go-to when I'm trying to map out game buttons on a controller, I don't know what's what. We're just going to touch ground to these various connections and it's going to show us what controller buttons are what. So I do this for a little bit, it takes about five, six minutes, and then I've got my mappings. Now we need to make a box. You can get clever or just use anything you have. These are some of my favorite clever uses of boxes. But I opted just to make a shrink down version of the fight stick that I sell on my website. And I'll just glue this empty box together. And this was just something I made to supplement how to make one of these controllers in this video. Since I changed my mind, I'm, I'm not using the Konami pad. We need two more holes, so a total of six. Start, select, and all the shape face buttons on the PlayStation controller. We're gonna desolder this ground test wire, and now I'll just connect a bunch of leads to each one of these. You'll see in this video, my soldering job gets super sloppy, and that's because I have a phone sitting in front of me while I'm trying to do all this work. It's easier to tin all the leads and we'll just alternate colors because it's, I only have three wire colors and if I alternate at least two of them, it makes it a little bit easier to figure out what wire is going where. Add some crimp connectors to the end, and you can see an overview. We're just adding the signal path to all the buttons and the directions. Now we'll make the ground daisy chain, which will ground all the buttons, and that's just going to go between everything. I'll remove the circuit board from this case and we'll just start wiring things to the controller and the buttons. If you've wired everything correctly, I tested this. You can put some hot glue to just give some strain relief to these wires and test it out. The PlayStation 1 and 2 has a very large library of arcade game compilations. This is so in order we've seen the Metal Slug compilation, the Sega Genesis compilation, 
midway compilation. This is the Namco compilation volume one. I think there's like five versions of that. And this arcade controller also helps tremendously with some button mashing games. Like this is Incredible Crisis and it's brutal on regular controllers without this. Here's just an overview of some games that I tried. Some worked, some don't work. Like the Taito Legends requires L1 or L2 for start, but still, hopefully, hopefully this was helpful. And thanks for watching, guys.